Ladies, it's time to talk about our most delicate area. We all have an intimate ecosystem which relies on proper balance for optimal health, but sometimes that equilibrium is disrupted. Today, what you need to know about bacterial vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis, or BV, is the most common vaginal infection in the United States, affecting over 21 million women of childbearing age every year. The Balancing Act sat down with OBGYN Dr. Stephen Shavusti to help us understand more about this condition. Bacterial vaginosis is a polymicrobial infection and the most common infection in women. And what essentially happens is you have an overgrowth of the unhealthy bacteria along with undergrowth or no growth of the lactobacilli species, which is a healthy bacteria. And so with bacterial vaginosis, something disrupts this normal vaginal microbiome and causes overgrowth of the unhealthy bacteria. This unhealthy bacteria is what really gives you the symptoms of bacterial vaginosis. I was at work in my cubicle and when I went to the bathroom, my coworker came in behind me and she handed me a feminine wipe and it was extremely embarrassing because it never ever happened to me before. So you know, I just went home for like probably a couple of days, I just bathed extra three to four extra times a day. My boyfriend, I didn't even want him by me due to the fact that I couldn't get the smell away. And since that happened, I kind of went down the road of trying to exactly figure out what the situation was. And I kind of changed a lot of different things up, but that process still didn't work. I still had this fishy, plungy odor and I didn't appreciate it. It was kind of depressing to a certain extent, feeling just uncomfortable and I'm very comfortable in my skin. I'm a very people person and for me to have this odor just made me not really want to be around anybody. So bacterial vaginosis usually presents as a white homogeneous grayish vaginal discharge and it usually has kind of a fishy odor to it. Almost 50% of the patients with bacterial vaginosis have no symptoms at all. So risk factors for women with bacterial vaginosis include women that smoke, poor nutrition, women that douche frequently, women that have sex with other women, women that have multiple sexual partners, and women with new sexual partners. So it's important for women to be treated for bacterial vaginosis. We know that when the normal microbiome of the vagina is disrupted, the pH of the vagina goes up. This elevated pH actually can contribute to women acquiring other sexually transmitted infections. For example, chlamydia, mycoplasma, genital herpes, human papillomavirus, or even HIV. Women with bacterial vaginosis are prone to developing pelvic inflammatory disease, which can contribute to long-term infertility. In addition, women who are pregnant and have bacterial vaginosis are prone to premature delivery, along with postpartum endometritis, which is an infection involving the uterus that can lead to long-term damage to the uterus and possibly future infertility. So this is why it's really important that women are evaluated and treated for both symptomatic and asymptomatic bacterial vaginosis. I tried to self-help by before going to the doctor looking it up, which was not a good idea because it kind of gave me like a little mania to a certain extent, kind of anxiousness because there's so many different things that could be wrong that I didn't know if it was an STD that I had or if it was a yeast infection. And I think the for me, the red flag was really when I seen a discharge. Like it was like a milky grayish type of color. So I'm not only having this foul odor, I also have a discharge that's saying, you know, we're screaming for help. We need help. Many women attempt to treat the symptoms of BV by employing their own self-help remedies. Unfortunately, sometimes even making their BV symptoms worse. The problem with bacterial vaginosis is many women self-diagnose themselves thinking they have a yeast infection because they can buy an over-the-counter medication for yeast and there's no over-the-counter medication for bacterial vaginosis. And we just stated earlier that bacterial vaginosis is the most common vaginal infection. However, there's yeast, there's also trichomonas. And we know that bacterial vaginosis can occur with a yeast infection in 15 to 20% of the cases. And so if a woman's only treating herself for the yeast, 
it's going to leave the bacterial vaginosis or trichomonas untreated. Bacterial vaginosis is diagnosed by a simple gynecologic examination, which involves a microscopic evaluation and looking at the pH of the vagina. And as soon as you check that pH and you see it's elevated, chances are it's probably not going to be a yeast infection. So within about five minutes, a diagnosis can be made and treatment offered to the patient. Once the doctor actually swabbed me and checked me out, he looked under the microscope and then he actually gave me a confirmation that it was bacterial vaginosis and it wasn't an STD. So I was really relieved because it was something that I could actually control with a little help. Current guidelines from the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, ACOG, updated in January 2020, recommend the treatment of symptomatic BV to restore the vaginal microbiome to a healthy state and reduce a woman's risk of acquiring and transmitting other STIs. Oral and intravaginal antibiotic treatment options as recommended by CDC are Metronizadol 500 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days. Metronizadol gel 0.75%, one full applicator, five grams, intravaginally once a day for five days. Clindamycin cream 2%, one full applicator, five grams, intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. Secnizadol two grams, oral granules, one dose. So multiple day drug dosing is associated with poor compliance in many studies. And we know with many of the medications that are approved for bacterial vaginosis, they're multiple day dose, including both oral and intravaginal products. We also know that many of these medications cannot be taken if you're consuming alcohol. We also know that women that are not compliant with finishing their medications have an increased risk of recurrence of bacterial vaginosis, and this has been shown in many studies. I often recommend my patients the Secnitazole, known as Solosec. It is a single dose oral medication that is approved by the Food and Drug Administration, and the single dose helps ensure patient compliance with the medication. My doctor prescribed Solosec for my BV. I was excited to find out that Solosec could be taken with applesauce, yogurt, or pudding. I couldn't taste the medicine when I mixed the one entire packet with my applesauce and ate it right away. Solosec was convenient and it worked with my needs. I was able to take it when I wanted and didn't need to worry about it interfering with my birth control or avoiding specific foods or alcohol. Solosec worked for me. My BV was taken care of with one little packet. One packet, one time, and I was done with my treatment. I suggest that women with BV talk to their doctors. For more information on BV and a copay savings offer, you can visit solosec.com and as always, go to our website, thebalancingact.com.